just before I go any further, even if you don't agree with anything that I'm about to say, which I hope you do to some degree, but could you just drop a like on the video right now? Because I'm making a video on Kelly Olynyk getting signed as opposed to Lonzo Ball, Kyle Lowry, any other big moves that are happening right now. Kelly Olynyk. You understand that? Do you understand that? So just drop a like on the video. That would be appreciated. Even if you don't agree with the sentiment, it would just be cool. So that would be nice. But let's talk about Kelly Olynyk because I love this signing. Love, maybe that's a strong word. Maybe I'm an optimistic guy. I'm definitely an optimistic guy. And sometimes that's to my own fault when it comes to the Pistons. But recently, it hasn't. Recently, it has been a great thing to be optimistic. And I continue to be optimistic in Troy Weaver, Dwayne Casey, and a coaching staff and team that has put together a nice rebuilding team. That has put together a really nice rebuilding team. And Kelly Olynyk, three years, $37 million, the 30-year-old stretch big. That's what we need to talk about right now. Shooting. Shooting. That's something we needed. Cade Cunningham comes in, and what do you want to surround him with? You want to surround him with guys who can shoot? Oh, a pick and pop? Oh, my God. <laughs> Kelly Olynyk shot 40% from three for the Houston Rockets in 27 games this season. Yes, I know it was completely out of everyone's kind of vision when he went to the Rockets, and no one paid it much mind. They saw, oh, he put up a couple of cute 20-point games. No, he averaged 20 a game. No, he averaged 20, nearly 10 rebounds a game, and close to five assists. <laughs> Those were his numbers, 19, 8, and 4. Those were his numbers on over 50% from the field, nearly 40% from three, on nearly five attempts a game. Do I expect him to do that in Detroit? Maybe. Maybe. There's this idea that he put up empty stats. I don't really buy into that because he was playing in a team where he just didn't have much help. Christian Wood was a nice partnership with him, but he wasn't exactly playing in the best team. So it was hard. And a lot of these teams he was facing, like you just look at the last few games of the season, a lot of these teams he was facing were still looking for playoff seating. They still had stuff to play for. It's not like they were just like, oh, well, it's Houston, so we don't really care. No, they were still trying to win. It's just all of a sudden, Olenek was a lot more of an option. And you see some parallels between him and Jeremy Grant. Yeah, hear me out. Hear me out. Grant has always been a better defender. I'm not comparing them in any light in that fashion because Grant has always been a great defender. But offensively, Grant was always the guy who would spot up, cut to the rim, and that's kind of it. Olenek was always the guy who would just kind of be in the pick and pop and he'd be out there as a floor spacer. When he got to Houston, he started to get more pick and pops. He started to pick and roll. He started to get post-ups and he started to take advantage of what he has, which is someone who's, what, nearly seven foot and can shoot from every spot on the floor, can shoot from the mid-range, can shoot from three. I'm genuinely really excited about this pickup and I think you guys should be as well because three years, $37 million, did we get rid of Mason Plumley for a similar contract? And Olenek is just... A far superior player. A far superior player, in my opinion. Defensively, it's a concern. But you want to talk about Isaiah Stewart getting more minutes. You want to talk about any of these things. Olenek is, he can fit into different lineups. He can fit into different teams. You can play him at the four. You could play him as a small ball five, which you're not going to have much rim protection, which helps that Jeremy Grant is a really good rim protector for a four, though. And Kate Cunningham is a really good rim protector for a one. So you get a little bit there, but you're not going to have a ton of rim protection. But the Cade Cunningham and Kelly Olenek pick and pops, think of Dirk Nowitzki and Luka Doncic. <laughs> If anyone who wasn't a Pistons fan is watching this right now, they're clicking off the video, probably blocking my channel after saying that. But just think of that, because that's what we're about to get. We're about to get that in some fashion. Cade Cunningham needs shooters. He needs shooters, and Olenek is just about the best shooter you can get at his position, at his skill set, like at this pay. It's just about the best shooter you could get. I really like the deal. 30 years of age, he's going to come in and he's just going to work. I just like what he's going to... He's going to be a spark plug off the bench or he's going to start. I think that seems a bit ridiculous to start him as a five, but I mean, it could happen, I guess. I guess he has played there before. I just don't really think his rim protection is much. But if you're going all out on offense and hoping Jeremy Grant, Cade Cunningham, and the versatility that you have defensively, if you're hoping that... You're going the new age offense where you just, you can guard multiple positions. You have guys that can do multiple things, multiple ball handlers, which Olenek is. He's also a very underrated passer. That passing we got with Plumley. think of Olenek doing the same thing, except he doesn't try to do as much. He's not as, he's just kind of not as void in the head. He doesn't have as big a gape, uh, vacancy that Plumley has. I don't want to hit the man while he's out. I know, I was. I don't want to hit the man while he's out because he does have playmaking tendencies, Plumley, but he also has the tendency to run the ball up the floor, Andre Drummond style, and try to do a crossover and then lose the ball and then go down the other end. He does have that tendency. He also has, just for the fact we don't have to see Mason Plumley mid-range shots, I saw that 
more times than I ever want to see again. I never want to see a Mason Plumlee mid-range shot again. I don't really want to see a free throw from that man again either. Again, I'm not trying to hit this man while he's out on the door, and we're here to talk about Olinic, but do we remember seeing those mid-range shots and those free throws? Like, they were awful. <laughs> they were just straight up awful. It's hard to watch. So aesthetically, now we get someone who's going to be easier to watch. That's It's that simple. And as I was saying, getting back to Olinic and what I think he can be, those 19 points a game in Houston, I'm not scrapping that out. I'm not saying, oh, you know, that was just a good stretch at the end of the season. That was legitimately game after game. I was waiting for him to slow down. He never slowed down. He continued to go at that pace. Do I expect him to average 20 points a game? No, I don't, because I don't think he's going to get the same opportunities, inevitably, because Houston was still fielding a lot of, I mean, guys that aren't even going to be in the league this year or guys who are going to be on very, very small contracts alongside Christian Wood, and that's about it for most of the games. So I don't expect him to be putting up 20 points a game on near damn Dirk Nowitzki shooting efficiency numbers. But I do expect, you look at what he did in Miami, he was just kind of that guy who would space the floor and get shots that way. You look at what he did there, he gave you about 10 points a game. Just at worst, what he gave you in Miami and Boston is what, a $9 million a year player? Yeah, that's probably the market for someone who can shoot 35% from three on a lot of attempts and space the floor. That is the market for him. And then all of a sudden you see this new version of Olinic where he's on a team that isn't quite as good or he just gets more of an opportunity and he gives you damn near 20 points a game. Now all of a sudden, what's his market? I guess $12 million a year. I don't think that's an overpay at all. I don't think that's anything crazy by any means. This is my opinion. If you disagree, just let me know below. That's fine. But I don't think that's an overpay at all. So I'm looking at somewhere in between. I'm looking at the 20 points a game is the extreme. If we get something like that, I mean, everyone is going to have to, anyone who said anything bad about Olytic is going to have to eat their words. <laughs> You're just going to have to because that would be absolutely insane to get those kind of numbers, that kind of production that he gave in Houston. And these weren't empty stats. I'm not getting into that. I don't think they're all empty stats. They were inflated, but not empty not in, empty. So if we can get somewhere in between the 10 points a game, which he's been at for most of his career and the new version of himself when he went to a team that wasn't contending, think about this. He's been at the Celtics and the Heat. So he's generally always been playing for something. He's generally always been on a good team. He's been asked to just be that guy who spots up and provides floor spacing. He's shot over 35% from three and I'm counting up the years. Only in two years has he not shot over 35% from three. He shot over 40% from three in two seasons. The guy is a legitimate floor spacer who takes five to six threes a game. What else can I say about that? Cade Cunningham is going to make him look like I mean, Dirk Nowitzki 2.0. That's what he's going to do. And Kelly is going to help out Cade. He's going to help out Killian. He's going to open up the floor. He's going to be able to play alongside Isaiah Stewart. He's going to mentor Luca Garza because that's the second coming of Olytic. He's working him through the ranks. <laughs> yeah, okay. But maybe, maybe, maybe. So we, if we could get somewhere in that 14 to 15 point per game range on good efficiency with that elite floor spacing, I'm not mad. I'm not mad by any means. I like this deal. I'll keep you updated on what deals are coming out. I just wanted to make this video because I saw a lot of people saying, oh, this is a terrible trade. Uh, we saw the same things with Jeremy Grant last year. A lot of people said, what the, what are you doing? You're overpaying. He should be getting paid like 14 to $15 million a year. That's a terrible overpay. Have faith in the man. Have faith in the man. Come on. Everyone says, oh yeah, I love to have faith in Troy Weaver. Oh my God, he turned our franchise around. Everyone says that. And then once they see a deal that they don't love, all of a sudden they're like, come on, come on, just give him a chance. Give him a chance. Give Kelly a chance. Give Troy a chance. Give Kate a chance to make it work because I'm excited to see Kate and Kelly. Whether this is the most ideal signing, I don't know, but I think it's going to be the most fun version. <laughs> like, it's going to be the most fun you could have. Nerland's Noel, maybe he provides better rim protection. Maybe he's just a better overall player and got at a cheaper contract. Possibly. But if you're just looking at what's going to be the most fun version, bringing in someone who averaged 20 points a game, bringing in someone who's just going to shoot lights out from three and form a deadly pick and pop partnership with Cade and Killian, that is definitely the most fun iteration of what could have happened for me in free agency so far. I know that sounds weird to say Kelly Olynyk is the most fun player we could have got. That's the reality. That's the NBA right now. That's how the NBA is right now because that's, that's fun to me.